Hello and welcome in this session of your course Pedagogy of Science. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh, your course instructor for this course. And I am here to help you in developing your understanding about a very important concept that is scientific attitude and scientific temper. When we are talking about scientific attitude and scientific temper, we must not forget that when we are talking about scientific attitude, we are basically talking about open-mindedness, a desire for accurate knowledge, a confidence in procedures for seeking knowledge, and the expectations that the solution of the problem will come through the use of verified knowledge. This very famous definition of scientific attitude was given by Henry Nelson. Let us discuss about one more definition and which was given by McIntyre in 2019. According to him, scientific attitude is a key component to defining and defending science. So if we analyze the definition of Nelson and McIntyre, so when we are talking about scientific attitude, we are basically talking about the behavior of a person with which he or she looks towards anything, whether it is an incident or an observation or something happening in the society, if someone is ready to view it with an open-mindedness without any bias, if he or she believes that there is a systematic procedure of seeking knowledge and that should be followed while exploring about different phenomena related to life, he or she assumes to be having scientific attitude. So actually what scientific attitude is saying, to understand it, we need to see certain characteristics of scientific attitude. And what these characteristics are? Individual critically observes and thinks. If a person is having scientific attitude, he or she is assumed to be using his critical observation and thinking to look towards anything or look towards any incident. It is always believed that a person with scientific attitude always respects new evidences and verified facts presented by others and sometimes changes own decision. Whatever observes tries to analyze it with questions of what is happening why is it happening, how is it happening, to explore more about the surroundings. If we analyze more about the characteristics of scientific attitude, we can say that a person with scientific attitude never accepts superstitions or false beliefs. A person who is having scientific attitude never make any judgment in hurry without suitable evidence and he or she always keen to establish the cause and effect relationship with any phenomenon. While analyzing different characteristics of scientific attitude, we can also say that a person with scientific attitude never believes in ultimate conclusions or final decisions because when you studied about the nature of science, you must have developed an understanding that science is tentative in nature. So if something is tentative in nature, it never comes out with any absolute solution or final decision. It keeps on changing with the new observations, new facts. So a person with scientific attitude focuses on solving the problem using different process, methods and techniques and always avoid exaggeration and always respect facts. These characteristics of science were basically highlighted by Bhaskar D. Rao and his colleagues in a paper in Science Promoter. After discussing the characteristics of scientific attitude, you must have developed a basic understanding that what scientific attitude is and how a person having scientific attitude behaves. Let us move further towards the dimensions of scientific attitude. Actually, there are six dimensions of scientific attitude, and these are rationality, open-mindedness, curiosity, aversion of superstitions, objectivity of intellectual beliefs, and suspended 
judgments. So if you analyze scientific attitude, you will find that a person with scientific attitude is always rational. He or she looks towards anything with an open-mindedness. He or she is always curious to know that why something is happening, what is happening, how is it happening. A person with scientific attitude always avoid aversion to the superstitions and shows an objectivity towards the intellectual beliefs and also believe in suspended judgments. Why are we discussing about scientific attitude? What are the benefits of scientific attitude? Let us discuss about these two in brief. When I am talking about benefits of scientific attitude, I believe that if a person has developed scientific attitude, so a true scientific attitude basically makes us tolerant. It should break artificial barriers of caste, religion, political and geographical boundaries and it should enable us to be self-reliant to the extent that we have the courage to change ourselves at any phase in life. So if we look towards the benefits of scientific attitude, we must say that scientific attitude makes a person a better citizen, a better individual. There is a very famous poem of Tagore and let me quote it here. The title of the poem is let my country awake. Where the mind is without fear and head is held high, where knowledge is free, where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls, where words come out from the depth of truth, where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection, where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the Freary desert sand of dead habits, where the mind is led forward by the ever widening thought and action into the heaven from freedom, my father, let my country awake. Why have I quoted this poem here? Because in the words of Gurudev, he is imagining a mind of an individual who is free to get knowledge from anywhere, who is without fear, who is not following the narrow domestic walls and where he or she examines what truth is. He or she is working hard to find out the reason that is God's effect relationship and where he or she is not ready to accept anything just because it has been said, whether he or she is ready to widen his thoughts or her thoughts and involve himself into actions to explore the knowledge, to explore the reality. And it is scientific attitude. So that's why this let my country away fits to explain what we are looking for in our citizens in India. Dear friends, when we are talking about scientific attitude, there is one more concept which is nearly associated to scientific attitude, that is scientific temper. Scientific temper term was used by Jawaharlal Nehru in his book, Discovery of India. And you must be surprised to know that India is probably the only country in the world which has this word scientific temper, which is looking to develop scientific temper in its citizens through a constitution. If you read the article 51 of the Indian constitution, what is it saying? It is saying that it is the fundamental duty of every citizen of India to develop the scientific temper, humanism, the spirit of inquiry and reform. So what our constitution asks us, our constitution believes that in India, its citizen will develop scientific temper. It means our constitution is looking for developing scientific temper in each and every individual of the country and it is not restricted or limited towards only the discipline of science. I don't think that you have ever come across any constitution or any national law of any country who is talking about the importance of scientific temper with this much importance. 
So what scientific temper is? As I told you that this term was basically coined by Jawaharlal Nehru in his book, The Discovery of India. And Nehru proposed in his book that in every citizen of India, scientific temper should be developed for protection against the superstitious belief of the traditional Indian society. It is only with the changed way of thinking that Indians can imbibe the scientific and technological capabilities essential for building an industrially developed society in India. So he was forcing basically to develop an Indian society. He was dreaming to have an Indian society which is scientifically and technologically capable and that is possible only if every citizen of India develops scientific temper in him or her. So what actually scientific temper is? Scientific temper is basically the attitude to stress upon the things which should be accepted for reason and not as blind faith. Scientific temper thus stresses investigation. It seeks proof without any bias or prejudice. This definition of scientific temper was suggested by Malcolm. So if you analyze this definition of scientific temper given by Malcolm, you can easily point out few important characteristics of scientific temper. Number one, things should be accepted for reason and not as faith. It should stresses, a person should stresses on investigation, should ask proof without any bias and prejudice. So many times it is said that scientific temper is an attitude to search for new bodies of knowledge and not to accept anything without a proof or a test. If a person has developed scientific temper, he or she has the ability to, to change his or her, her own stand in the light of new evidences and not to rely on the preconceived notions in lieu of observational evidences. So there is always more importance given to the observational evidences. So when we think about scientific temper, we always believe that scientific temper is an attitude or a way of being that involves application of mind, application of logical analysis, willingness to meet with new facts and evidences without preconceived notion and the most important is that willingness to question the conclusions based on newer evidences. So a person with scientific attitude always question in the light of evidences he or she has. So when we are talking about scientific temper, we must not forget that scientific temper basically represents the spirit of inquiry. It involves the process of logical reasoning. It tries to find out the cause and rational justification of an event, of any event actually, objectively, and he or she is always free from all prejudices and makes beliefs. So a person with scientific attitude basically comes with a type of frame or disposition of mind, what kind of disposition or what kind of frame of mind which is free from superstitions and prejudices, free from rigidness and conformity, free from close-mindedness and irrationality, free from uninnovativeness and subjectivity. It means that a person with scientific temper always believes in open-mindedness, rationality, his or her mind is always innovative and they believe in objectivity. When we are talking about science and scientific temper, how these two are related, because scientific temper, as Nehruji imagined, is not related to only science. He believed that scientific temper should be developed in every citizen of the country. So when we are talking about scientific temper, in relation to science, we must not forget that science gives us knowledge tells us the logic, provides an experience and explains why things exist the way they do. And spot scientific temper does. Scientific temper guides us on the constructive use of knowledge, abilities and experiences that science equips us with. There is both wisdom and morality involved in the uses of knowledge. Let us move towards the attributes of scientific temper. There are few common attributes like critical thinking, logical thinking, 
respect for evidences, objectivity, open-mindedness, honesty, skepticism, and perseverance. Let us talk about all these attributes in brief. The first is critical thinking. When we are talking about critical thinking, we are basically talking about the ability of an individual to analyze the experiences and review the actions through reflecting. So for critical thinking, a person requires an abstract thinking to reflect on our actions and he or she discusses with them about the failures or mistakes, discusses the alternative ways of approaching to a given problem. So what you can do as a teacher, you should ask open-ended questions to encourage your learners to analyze the information. You should give them opportunity for critically think on various aspects of a given problem or experience. If they think critically, if they use the abstract thinking, if they analyze the experiences and actions by reflection, they definitely will develop critical thinking among them. The next is logical thinking. So when we are talking about logical thinking, we are basically talking about a thinking with logical reasoning. Logical thinking makes you focus on your observations and organize them carefully through reasoning before arriving at any conclusion. Logical thinking gives opportunity to your learners to reason out their observations. So what you can do? So if you develop logical thinking among your learners by giving them opportunity to reason out their observations, they will start looking for patterns in terms of cause and effect before concluding. Next attribute is respect for evidence. In science or a person with scientific temper always believes that any judgment or conclusion should be based on suitable evidences. If there are not enough evidences to support a conclusion, it cannot be treated as a valid scientific data or scientific idea. And if there are evidences contradicting some idea, then there should be willingness to change the idea itself in the light of convincing evidences. So what you can do? You should help your learners to collect evidences for verifying and testing their ideas about an object or event. And you should help them to learn how to confront ideas with evidences. Next comes objectivity. Objectivity is the ability of looking at things without preconceived notions, prejudices, and subjective biases. Objectivity helps in developing respect for evidences since an objective person will only rely on unbiased evidences. So if somebody sets for a scientific inquiry with some preconceived notions in mind, then there are obvious chances to obtain biased results. So what you can do? You should help your learners to learn to accept any idea only after testing and verifying it against sufficient number of evidences. Next is open-mindedness. So open-mindedness means a person, if he or she listens to others and is willing to change mind if warranted, the person should be open-minded and flexible in her or his approach. He or she should evaluate all observations, inferences, explanations carefully and then accept the ones which are consistent with the evidences. You need to help your learners to become open-minded by letting them share their viewpoints with each other and evaluate them collectively. They should show respect for the best explanations and review their own conclusions if found in consistence with the upcoming observations and evidences. You also need to teach your students that they should develop honesty in reporting observations. A person with honesty in reporting observations never emphasize on doing science experiments without fear of verifying or proving something right. Why should the learner feel pressure of coming out with the correct result while performing science experiment? In class, we do this mistake many times that we give them an idea that what should be your expected answer and they always try to find that answer which is expected and not focus on the process. So it is your duty as a science teacher to imbibe the habit of carrying out science experiment with honesty and report the actual result. You should focus more on the process rather than on the result of inquiry. If there is any deviation or discrepancy in the result, it is obvious. Learners should not be penalized for it 
rather they should be encouraged to identify where the mistake has been done what are the possible reasons for that deviation which has resulted skepticism it is the ability to question accepted beliefs ideas and facts prevalent in the society on the basis of scientific reasoning or investigations so what do you need to do you need to help your learners to develop this attitude of questioning widely accepted superstitions and myths in our society in the name of religion culture magic and so on you need to give a lot of space in your science classes about discussing such non scientific ideas and beliefs to help learners to develop into logical and rational thinker and the last is perseverance it is the ability to carry out something with sustained and persistent efforts a lot of scientific investigations or inventions were the result of persistent efforts of scientists for long and for some it took their lifetime you must help your learners to accept their failure learn from them and motivate for further trial so dear teachers my dear friends let us work towards nurturing the scientific attitude and scientific temper among our learners and make them the meaningful useful citizen of the country and society only then we will be able to achieve the objectives which is part of our constitution thank you very much